If there were a rage quit in YouTube filming, this product makes me want to rage quit. But also props, because this company's been around for like, fuck, longer than I've been alive, and they were one of the first endurance products out there, so good on them for being a pioneer. That's true. Hey folks, welcome to Saturday. We are reviewing Hammer Nutrition Heed today. Founded by Brian Frank in 1987, so this has been around longer than we have. Wow. That's that's a long time. Let's see if he's changed his formula since 1987. The nutrition facts uh, say zero fat, zero saturated fat, zero cholesterol, that's all great. Uh, zero protein, also great. Sodium, 60 milligrams, seems a little low. Carbohydrate, 27 grams for one scoop, got it. That's pretty straightforward. That is what you want to see. You want to see sodium and carbs only in your nutrition facts. Uh, so we're doing good so far. All right, so first, who is this product for? Uh, slow twitch nerds who have been riding bikes since before I was born. Oftentimes, anybody who wants a steadier blood sugar and they want to smooth out the ups and downs of all the sugary products. Yeah, it does say something about that on the product or on the um, packaging, but we'll get to that. So let's go over the ingredients. So the first ingredient is maltodextrin, which is... Glucose in a string, and you can watch our video there or there. All right, next ingredient, uh, this is a red flag, that's xylitol. That's bonkers. What? Why is xylitol number two on the ingredient list? I can answer that. Is it's, this made by a dentist? It's, it's made, it's, I don't, <laughs> that's actually a good point. It might have, okay, so this might actually have, we should talk about that. Dental health, if it is a concern, xylitol, we should talk about that at some point. However, the reason xylitol is in this product as the second ingredient is because they don't include any fructose from any source. And fructose is the thing that makes beverages like this sweet. And xylitol fixes that. It yeah. makes it sweet. After xylitol, we have natural flavor, then we have calcium chelate, magnesium chelate, potassium chelate, stevia, then sodium citrate, sodium chloride, L-carnosine, glycine, L-tyrosine, manganese chelate, vitamin B6, chromium polynic... <laughs> chromium polynicotinate. I actually don't know what chromium polynicotinate is. Do you? Yeah, it's placebo. What is it? I don't know. It's, and it doesn't matter. It literally, none of that matters. Below maltodextrin, the rest of it doesn't matter. I agree, but I just don't know what that last ingredient is. I'll have to look that up because I actually don't know what that is. It's a source of chromium because they, they're adding all of these micronutrients and minerals in the hopes that it provides some sort of cognitive benefit, some motivational benefit as you train, some sort of edge fringe performance benefit because they're missing the sugar ratio that you actually need to enhance performance. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming they're choosing the chelate, like calcium chelate, for example, to increase the bioavailability to make calcium and magnesium and potassium all absorb into the body more easily. What are your thoughts on getting that calcium, magnesium, potassium, and manganese? <laughs> So they're really stretching. So most companies, when they stretch to put like when they when marketing dollars get into the product department and they start putting potassium, magnesium, and calcium into supplements so that you'll buy them, they stop with those three electrolytes and they say we've got all four major electrolytes. He takes it even farther and puts in manganese and chromium and some other metal, I think. They're really stretching to add basically marketing department dollars to their ingredient list. Yeah. And for reference, you can watch our things you don't need in a, your sports supplement video again here, here. Which, which side of the screen is it on? I think it's top left. I think it, it usually is top left. Or top right? Which side do I sit on? It's the, is it reversed? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the L-carnosine, glycine, and L-tyrosine in this product? I forgot that you read them out loud because they are useless. They're, they're, I'll be, I'll try to be respectful to the people who thought to put them in there. Um, they're attempting to boost your energy and sort of like your alertness, kind of like caffeine, but not caffeine and much weaker. And that's why those amino acids are in there. Yeah, they're they're hoping to, with all three of them, I think, yeah, increase your cognitive drive. And I believe glycine is, it synthesizes creatine. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong on that, but. That's news to me and not because I not think it's wrong. It's a, I have no idea. It's so fringe that I don't care. Right, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter for this product. <laughs> <laughs> for this product, I guess my my main criticism here is that if you have these three L-carnosine, glycine, and L-tyrosine in the product, you could put creatine in here, or you could have a, a separate heat product that was just creatine, and you could add caffeine to this product, and you would have that cognitive drive that you're looking for without having to add the L-carnosine, L-tyrosine, and glycine. Caffeine would just be a lot more straightforward. 
Absolutely. Enough. I just realized why they did it the way they did it with those amino acids to try to boost cognitive drive instead of using caffeine. Their whole marketing message at Hammer is that it's a very steady feel. It's like you, you're going to, it's for the longest performance. It's like you're doing Kona, it's 10 hours, and it, there's no ups and downs. And anything that would trigger a person's thought that that might cause an up or, up or a down in my energy level as I train is left out of this product. So lots of people think caffeine, oh, it's too, gives me too many spikes in my energy level levels or sugar makes me go up and down in training. That's just not true. It's just bad execution and training and misunderstanding how to do things. But I mean, if you had a low amount of caffeine in this product and you consumed it steadily throughout whatever your activity is, then you wouldn't have those spikes and crashes in energy. You would feel well-fueled and alert the entire time. I mean, if you just slammed, you know, a liter of this and then didn't have anything for like 90 minutes and then you slammed another liter, then you might have some problems. But if you really are consuming gradually or inconsistently, then that wouldn't be a problem. That's totally true. And I think people who use heed, carbolin, and you you can are the most common people who when they learn of actually how to fuel with sugars and how to take in more they're the most common people to report ups and downs in their energy level because they're under consuming carbohydrates once they've shifted to a glucose fructose mixed carbohydrate mix the reason that happens is the glucose and fructose does get into your system more and you actually need and will benefit from more of glucose and fructose as compared to when you're only using maltodextrin uh, you're sort of forced by your gut to consume it steadily you basically run you're running low octane fuel um, and then when you step it up to high octane fuel sometimes those people will report like I crashed and I'm like well consume 20 grams per hour more and it fixes the problem so it says to mix one level scoop with 16 to 28 ounces of water and that's um, 475 to 828 milliliters of water sip continuously during each hour of exercise and consume for duration of exercise if you were using this as directed you would be getting 32 to 57 grams of carbohydrates per liter of water and 72 to 126 milligrams of sodium per liter of water and 30 to 53 ish milligrams of potassium per liter of water. If I were to use this in training, uh, I would add sucrose because I'm looking for a fructose source to add to the pure glucose from this product. Since it's pure glucose, I need to add really optimal would be to add just as much fructose as there is glucose in this. If I'm going to shoot for a two to one glucose fructose ratio instead of a one to one glucose fructose ratio, I would add two parts sucrose to one part maltodextrin, which is this. Yeah, and that would make that flavor a lot less mild. This is melon flavor, and this is a really mild flavoring, and that's probably just, it's not very sweet, and that's probably because the carbs are all coming from maltodextrin, and maltodextrin is not very sweet at all. It says complex carbohydrates for reliable energy, not the flash and crash of simple sugars. Which is okay. actually wrong. Well... Maltodextrin is not... You're right. You're right. Maltodextrin does not function like a complex you, carbohydrate right. in your gut. They're not the flash and crash, but the, it is complex carbohydrates, technically. Even though maltodextrin's string of glucose it, molecules... It's complex. It's complex. By definition. But you're right. But it's you're just right. as fast and just as flash and crash as anything else. It's... It's the fastest, actually. Complete electrolyte profile to help prevent cramping. Yeah, that's debatable. There's no evidence that the electrolytes that they added actually help prevent cramping, and there's a ton of evidence that the amount of sodium that they added doesn't help prevent cramping. You need like 10 times to 20 times as much sodium as this has. I'm getting tired. <laughs> yeah, I need more coffee. It's like probably... Where's our milk. caffeinated gel? We need a gel. Gel to the rescue. <laughs> Does this have, you should take a scoop of this, it has tyrosine, it'll wake you right up. Added nutrients, buffer lactic acid, and promote efficient carbohydrate metabolism. Thoughts? Accurate. Fine. Misleading, because they don't have fructose, but continue. What about the buffering lactic acid? In the most circuitous roundabout physiological marketing speak, fine. Yes, carbohydrates consumed will help you produce less lactate. Like, well, it's not even. I think th I think they were probably referring to L-carnosine, glycine, and L-tyrosine, I believe. Then that's a joke. Um, the L-carnosine is supposed to promote buffering, but, I mean, I don't know how much of that is even... Oh, I'm... yes, I do. It's such a small amount, yeah. and it's negligible. I think it's enough to say that it works, but it's not actually going to make a noticeable difference. Yeah, you have to take way more than they put in it. Yeah, I think they put it in there so that they could write this on the label. Deliciously mild flavor goes down easily. I agree with that. It is really mild. It tastes, you know, good. Designed for optimal health. No simple sugars, citric acid, or anything artificial. Well, 
Okay. Can I dig into that for a second? <laughs> Go for it. So they say no simple sugars, which definitionally is true, and it's misleading intentional. Well, I don't. I can't speak to their intent, but it's misleading because maltodextrin functions exactly like a simple sugar. It immediately breaks down into glucose, and your body absorbs it and gets blood glucose right away. It is effectively a simple sugar. It just isn't a simple sugar when you're talking about nutrition labels, yeah, just because it's a polysaccharide, not a disaccharide or monosaccharide. On a label, it looks like it's complex in your body your body thinks it's a simple sugar so can I call heed into the 21st century here sure but first I'm noticing this beautiful black and white picture of the mountain I got distracted by oh it is gorgeous it is gorgeous and I feel so positive about this product <laughs> this product I've just seen that mountain anyway back to what you were saying go ahead I honestly I would love to see heed succeed and retake part of the market share um, and not just from people over the age of 45 who ride bikes for more than four hours I would love to see them add fructose to their mixes and step away from the like pure maltodextrin dogma complex carbohydrate. I, th I think there is room in the market and they would do very well if they added some fructose. I also think that they need to move xylitol way down the list or remove it and think about removing stevia because you're not going to need those two things if you add fructose anyway. And then let's nix all the other stuff too like the calcium and the manganese and all of that. Yeah, sodium citrate's in there. That's fine. But make, yeah, make heed great again. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, it definitely has potential and it has been around forever and they have, you know, done things right to keep their company alive this long, but there's definitely things that they can do to this product to make it better. Hats off to Hammer Nutrition for being around for so long and for this product for standing the test of time. Yes. I also request a colored picture of the mountain on the package, please. I just really want the full effect. That would take away from the, the marketing and the color scheme they're going for, but that's my request. Do you have any other, <laughs> other requests? I think we should wrap it up. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate you all. Come back to Saturday for our next product review, which will be, uh, I don't know. It's going to be SIS beta fuel. Ooh, another maltodextrin offender. Until next time. I really do like this picture, actually. I want to know if that's in Canada or where that is. Let's see. Where are they based? Oh, Montana. Montana. Oh, that, yeah.